क्वेश्चन नाइन्थ इट्स इज इन अ रीजन ऑफ स्पेस अ यूनिफॉर्म स्टैटिक मैग्नेटिक फील्ड ऑफ इंडक्शन बी वन इज स्टेबलिस्ट अब एक्सिट प्लेन एंड अनदर यूनिफॉर्म स्टैटिक मैग्नेटिक फील्ड ऑफ इंडक्शन बी टू विच इज ग्रेटर दैन बी वन इज स्टेबलिस्ट बिलो द एक्सिट प्लेन पिक्चर इज ऑन ऑन दिस लेफ्ट साइड बोथ द फील्ड्स आर इन द पॉजिटिव जेड डायरेक्शन a particle of mass m and charge q is projected from the origin with velocity v making an angle theta with the positive x direction as shown in the figure a uh, find average velocity of the particle in large time interval so first we need to analyze what kind of motion it is going to follow and then we need to uh, find out the displacement in time and divide and that has to for long time interval well so uh, you know uh, you know that uh, if magnetic field is uniform and velocity is perpendicular in the direction to the magnetic field then particle moves in a circle and the motion is uniform circular motion and let's say uh, let's assume it would have been the same magnetic field then you'll find it would try to move in a circle maybe like that so uh, but what happens there since these magnetic fields are different and this is the line dividing or plane dividing the two fields so you'll find that this will be moving in a circle then after it will be entering in this magnetic field it will also move in a circle and you'll find uh, depending upon this magnetic field they will be having different radii and correspondingly they will form the displacements now we know in uniform circular motion radius is given by mv upon qb so in the first zone circular path will have a radius mv upon qb1 in the second zone which is below this uh, Z explain is going to have a radius m v upon qubit q b two. That's as simple as anything. Since b two is greater than b one, then we can claim r two is going to be smaller than r one. That means radius of this circle is going to be smaller, whereas the above one is going to be larger. If it makes a complete uh, circle, or even if it makes a part of the circle, radius can be compared in the same manner. now let's try to understand these figures and these figure will help us to find out the displacement time and then average velocity because we know the average velocity as a formula displacement by time so we need to find time interval and we need to find displacement in that time interval and that time interval is has to be large so uh, you will find that if the particle is going to move it will be some periodic motion kind of thing because it will be moving certain part of the circle upside then certain part of the circle downside then again certain part of the circle upside then certain part of the circle downside and this motion will keep on repeating keep on repeating so let's consider one cycle if we consider one cycle and try to find out the displacement in time for that cycle then we can say next cycle is going to be very similar and the further next is going to be very similar then we can as uh, go for uh, large time interval as well now till then this particle remains in b1 magnetic field it is going to follow this kind of circular path and this is going to be the line where it will be entering into a different magnetic field now you know this is a nice circular path so whatever the angle it is making from the x axis the same angle it is going to make when it is going to exit from this x axis or going to blow this uh, z x plane once it goes below to z explain it will be moving in a different circle and we have identified this radius of this circle is going to be smaller as compared to the upper, upper circle so it's going to be of small radius that may, that also says this particle is not going to come back or uh, outside these magnetic field regions so it will remain in the magnetic field region all the time now when it moves in this kind of circle this is a rough picture you can think of it will again come back to this as z explain and will enter into the magnetic field b1 once it enters into the magnetic field b1 then you'll find uh, it will again repeat the same kind of motion and then again this kind of motion and the particle will keep on moving in basically in one cycle it will be moving two parts of the circles or um, two parts of two circles basically now if this angle was theta we, we are able to understand this angle is theta similarly this is also going to be symmetric so whatever uh, the angle it is entering into the same it is going to be exit as well and all the time speed will remain the same velocity direction is changing so this is the one cycle i am explaining and let's say in the first uh, part it took t1 time and then the second uh, field it took time t2 
So how long it was for this cycle, it, it took uh, T1 plus T2 to complete this cycle. And the, you will find the next cycle will be repeated very similar manner. So it's going to be like exact similar situation. Now in this cycle, how much the displacement has taken place? Can we identify that? So it has started from this O point, ultimately it is at this location. So can we say this is the displacement we are looking at? So this is the displacement T1 plus T2 are the times in these two parts. So we can say we got total time, idea about at least total time as well as of the displacement. Now, how to find out this displacement? That's going to be next challenge. Now, if we are able to manage how much this distance is, this chord length, it may not be, uh, uh, it won't be in fact uh, half of the circle this won't be the semicircle because this angle is theta if this angle would have been 90 degree then it would have been semicircle so it depends on theta but definitely it's going to be some chord of circle and this will be another uh, chord of another circle so if we are interested in finding out the displacement wouldn't it be uh, the case when uh, if you can find the first chord and length and the second chord length and subtract the two so from here we get the glimpse how to find out the displacement. Now let's analyze any of them. Uh, so let's say this is a circle. We are interested to find out this chord length. And this is let's say P point, this is Q point. And let's say this is a situation, let's say we are considering this first portion. Similarly, it's going to be the second, we can relate it easily. Now this was the velocity, then this was the velocity. So you'll find this was the angle theta initially. Now we are interested on this chord. So what we can do, we can draw the perpendicular to this velocity. That means we can find out the center of the circle and join these two uh, points. These are going to be the radius of the circle and we know how to find the radius of the circle. We have already written the expression. Furthermore, if this angle is theta, you'll find this is going to be 90 degree. So this leftover angle is going to be 90 minus theta. Now, if we draw a perpendicular from the center on this chord, it's going to meet somewhere in between. Uh, exactly in between and we can say this angle is going to be 90 degrees so this was 90 minus theta 90 degree then you will find this angle is going to be theta that means half angle is going to be theta in fact we got to know the total angle the total angle is going to be formed uh, at the center because of the uh, any cir uh, circular path uh, or this upside circular path we can say this is going to be th uh, twice of the theta twice of the theta so that's total angle subtended at the center in the circular motion, maybe in the B1 field. Now our interest was in chord length. Then you'll find, uh, if we are able to find this half length, we can double it, we can double it. So you'll find this half length is going to be, use this right angle triangle, and this is going to be perpendicular. So this is going to be R sine theta. If it is R sine theta, so can you find how much this PQ is going to be? Definitely it's going to be two R sine theta. So the PQ length that we were interested in is now uh, available to us and it's twice R sine theta, where R is going to be radii. And theta is going to be the angle, this, this theta, theta we know. Now you'll find in the second case, second circle is going to be a little bit different. Now, it's going to be just reverse like this. And you need to measure uh, this entire angle. You'll find this angle is going to be two theta. So the angle that up, up to which it has moved is not 2 theta, rather 2 pi minus 2 theta. So we will remember this point and we will use whenever we, we are going to require for it or we will have a requirement for it, right? Now let's proceed and understand. So in one cycle, the displacement will be in the positive x direction, yes. So average velocity is going to be in positive x direction. So we got to know what the velocity direction is. How much this delta x is going to be? Now we can say uh, it's going to be equal to the chord for this PQ that is 2R sine theta. Here was 2. So it's 2R sine theta. To be precise, you will say it's 2R1 sine theta because uh, magnetic field is B1. And then for um, another, it's going to be 2R2 sine theta. Now here theta will remain the same because of the reason this is theta. So this is theta coming in. So you'll find the displacement is going to be 2 R1 minus R2 sine theta. Now let's find out the time. Time spent in B1 is going to be T is equal to arc length divided by speed. 
arc length is going to be r1 into the angle subtended at the center which is 2 theta we just are identified divided by v so that's t1 time is spent in b2 b2 how much time is spent uh, is going to be spent in this magnetic field zone then we'll find uh, for that side we need to find the angle subtended by this so the angle subtended is going to be 2 pi minus 2 theta radius is r2 so arc length is going to be arc into angle divided by speed which is v now we have t1 we have t2 so we have t1 plus t2 we have displacement so we can write the average velocity magnitude direction we have already ascertained so it's going to be delta x upon t1 plus t2 now delta x is going to be equal to this number we can substitute back over here so it's going to like 2 r1 minus r2 sin theta t1 t2 are here we can substitute over here you can see 2 by r v can be taken outside so it's going to like r1 theta then r2 pi minus r2 theta i have a, um, combined theta together so this theta is common so r1 minus r2 plus pi r2 you can check the calculation they are easier now put r1 and r2 values on this expression when you put r1 and r2 values then you'll find mv upon q was common so we can to take this as a common and it will be 1 by v1 minus 1 by v2 into sine theta divided by 1 by v because this 2 and this 2 is settled down so 1 by v and here also you will find the radius are involved so mv upon q we can taken as a common and then you will find 1 upon b1 minus 1 upon b2 and theta plus pi by b2 because this is r2 you can check the calculations now you'll find mv upon qb mv upon qb can be cancelled out this we can take upside go upside so it's going to be v and then balance the denominator then you'll find it's b2 minus b1 sine theta divided by here also you will take this b1 by b2 downside they will get cancelled out so it's going to be like b2 minus b1 theta plus b1 pi so it will be b1 pi plus theta times b2 minus b1 so this expression is going to indicate the magnitude of average velocity and direction is plus x direction that means i cap this will become our answer so this is how we will be able to solve this got it thank you